I was sitting up until very early hours of this morning in great turmoil in my spirit about our country. And I was saying, Lord, what do, what do I bring to the congregation this morning that can just give them an encouraging word? And I, I battled. There were so many things I was reading. And usually the Lord gives me something on the Monday that I, it almost builds up until Sunday morning. And then I'm like, there's a word. And I have this thing. The Lord was saying, we, if you're a child of God, if you're his, his child, you are a foreigner. Because heaven is our home. So how are we treating foreigners when we are foreigners ourselves? And I want to speak to you about this this morning because a lot of times we want a feel-good message. We walk out, we're like pumped. I can do that for the week. I feel good. I've got the scripture. I've got this thing. I just feel, you know, I can do this. This morning you might, you might not have that. You might not have that pump this morning to say, you know what, I'm going to do this. But I want to speak to you about the words you choose to speak over our nation. The, because I've also been guilty of that. About selecting, and I, we've got Nigerian people here, but when we think of drug dealers, straight away we think Nigerian. We've got an amazing Nigerian family here. You must see the kids. I wish all our kids could behave like that. Respectful. Honor their parents. They listen when I speak. Come on, they listen when I speak. Tato, must learn, bruh. So, I have this on my heart, and I just want to speak to you as the Lord was speaking to my heart. Did somebody say something? Nothing. Um, for the visitors that are here, sometimes you're here, there's some ladies that talk to me from the pulpit. I don't know if they think I'm their husband. They're like trying to tell me what to say. Dot, you must sort them out. We won't mention names, Lulu. And uh, Isabel, sometimes I see Barry, am I right? Okay. So Lamentations 2 verse 14 says this. The visions your prophets were false and worthless. So what he was speaking about was the prophets had brought a false and worthless prophecy. And it's a picture of South Africa right now. If you go through our neighborhood here, and you can walk into any church, you can pay someone to prophesy over you. And trust me, that prophecy will be amazing. You'll walk out, you'll think, Yo, the millions are coming. Do you know, the, the prophets of the old were murdered. Many times when the prophets came into town, many people left. Because a prophet of old never came to tickle your ears. He came to tell you the truth. You see, I also like to hear those things that the Lord's got something great for me coming. I know that. But I need something for now. I would rather somebody come to me and say, Pastor Kenneth, the Lord has given me this word. And rather rebuke and teach me and correct me. You see, if we started going down the line here, and I'm not picking just because you guys are in front, okay? And we started to go into every single person's life. And I started to go there and the Lord says to me, this lady needs to fix this thing. Don't you think that is much greater than saying, you know what, the Lord's going to bless you with a job. I know that the Almighty God takes care of me. I don't have to prophesy that. I don't have to tell you that he's going to undertake for you. He's going to take care of you. Because the word says that. You see, a prophetic word has to bring you to a place of maturity. It says this. The visions of your prophets were false and worthless. They did not expose your sin to ward off captivity. The prophecies they gave were false and misleading. Our nation is full of these false prophets. And I'm not speaking against a specific church. But we see it even on TV, the prophetic word that goes out constantly. If you send this money, you will get this. And it's all about increase. The prophetic word is, bring this, you get this. It's like going to an investment banker. Give this, I promise you this. It's fake. It's as fake as fake news on Facebook. They promise you stuff, in you have to give something and you will get a return value on that. That is not the kingdom of God. That is not what Jesus came for. 
Jesus came to set the captives free. And I want to ask you this morning, would you prefer me to come up here and tickle your ears like in Timothy? The book of Timothy speaks about in the end times they will come and tickle your ears with doctrines that, that make your flesh feel good and that you fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't want it. And if you, my friend, and they, I've got many here that I've just met, I've got many here that I've known for 15 years, some more. If you, my real friend, and the Lord says to you, listen, Pastor Kenneth's battling with something, you need to go and tell him. You'd walk up to me and say, you don't even have to use the word pastor. You can say, Kenneth, this is what the Lord has got for you. Fix this. I'd, rat, I'd appreciate that word. Then rather than you come to me and say, you know, the Lord shows me he's going to bless you. I know this. I know this. So let me ask you this question. What do you want to hear from the Lord this morning? If I'm in that space where I'm saying, Lord, correct me. Send someone to correct me. Because you know what? There's a few things that we each miss. The Bible says that God resists the proud. That means that that person that's got pride within them or pride within them doesn't know it. It's the same as King David. He didn't recognize his own sin, but he was a great man of God. So King David was caught up in sin. The Lord had to send somebody to him to tell him about that sin. I find that amazing because King David knew that that was sin. Imagine if each of you came into church in the morning and as you sat there, there was a billboard that popped up on your head and gave the list of your sin. Be empty. Some of you sitting there say, no, I got that. I got it, PK. So the first one will be there, pride. And what would be the worst sin on your list? This is stuff that doesn't get tackled in churches anymore. Because they need your finances to keep the pastor in his lifestyle. So I don't want to talk about your sin. I don't want to talk about the fact that you lie. And if you say I don't lie, then you've already told one new lie. <laughs> so I'm saying, are we listening to the Holy Spirit? Or are we chasing after prophets in our nation that is speaking nonsense? And taking from the women that don't have finance. I see ladies that used to come here that have nothing. And the one lady said to me, Pastor Kenneth, I need a prophetic word because I want a farm. This is 10 years ago, maybe a bit less. And I said, but the Lord hasn't got that in your, for you. She left to a place where they promised her that. I still see her walking there every day, but they pump her for money. So I want to ask you this morning, what is it that you need? What do you need from me, from this pulpit do you need tickling of ears or truth? We need truth. Because the Bible says the truth will set you free. Not a prophecy that makes you feel good. Do we get that? Do we, are we in the same, same page? It says this in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 10. We should all know the gifts. It says this is where Almighty God was speaking about the gifts that he gives each person. He says this. And to another, he gives a gift of miracles. And to another, prophecy. Or foretelling the future. Speaking a new message from Almighty God. And the other, he gives the discernment of spirits. The ability to distinguish sound, godly doctrine. This is the amplified version. Sound, godly doctrine. Or the, to check those that have got a deceptive doctrine, main made religious cults. You should be, after this, be able to come to me and say, Pastor Kenneth, what you said there, I need to double check that. You should take this word that I've given and go before mighty God and say, Lord, can I trust this word that this man has given? And any person that gives you a word, a prophetic word, if he gives you something, it needs to line up with the word of God. How many people here have had a prophetic word that you're going to be a multimillionaire? Us, I've seen a church once where a man stood, he was a, a prophet. He said this, the first 10 people that stand up, by the end of the year, you'll be multimillionaires. And about 500 people jumped up. He said, okay, everyone. 
You see, that's just, it, it, it's, I, could, I could come up with a prof, prophetic word now that somebody here would say, yes, that's for me. That's just like a shotgun prophetic word that's going out and saying, this is for somebody here. I want you to think about your life and say, Lord, what is it that you need to do in me to get me to a place where I hear your voice? Where I speak to you, where you speak to my heart that I know where I'm going is right. You see, a lot of people will leave that up to me. They say, well, you're the prophet or you're the pastor or you, you do those things. You go and seek the Lord and I ask you and, and you can come and tell me. You should be at a place, if you've been serving the Lord for more than a year, you should, maybe a little bit more, you should be in a place where you hear his voice and you bring that to me and say, Pastor Kenneth, this is what God's telling me. Will you stand in agreement with me? That is my job, to stand in agreement with your prayer, your vision, your desire. How young can you be to do that? If you're hearing my voice, it's you. If you're understanding what I'm speaking, it is you. You should be able to come to me and say, thus says the Lord, Pastor Kenneth. Oh, Kenneth, because you're my friends and family. Are you getting this? Youngsters here have brought words before and spoken words of prophetic words and words of wisdom to people here that used to be on this pulpit that were amazing. Pastor Mike that used to minister here, he lost his daughter, she was 21. He was battling with it for five, six years after that he was still battling. And a man that couldn't read or write came to me and said, Pastor Kenneth, I got a word for that man. He was terrified to give him that word. I said, come with me. He sat him down and set that man free that day. And you must remember Pastor Mike was in ministry for 40 years when he gave him that word. So you should be able to go to God, say, Lord, Give me a word for me. What is going on in my life? He will tell you to go to the word of God and start to read. Okay. Spend time with him. Close your eyes and just say, Lord, give me a word. It is not my job to do that. You know, so many people over the last few months have been coming to me and saying, you know what? Jesus is coming back soon. You know what? It could be today for you. You could die today. Today. I'm not worried about the day of the return of Jesus. I'm worried about today for my life now. Because otherwise I start focusing on other stuff and I'm missing so many things here. I know Jesus is coming. Bible says only God knows when. So why am I worried about it? Why am I stressed and say, well, you know, this sign and that sign. He says we should look at the signs. But the fact is this. You're so worried about that, you're forgetting about this. The inside, what is going on here? The maturity, the maturing of your relationship, your walk with Jesus. I like her. She's my friend. So, listen to this. So in South Africa, let's take a picture of South Africa. And I said, Lord, what, what is going on in our land? What word can I give to the foreigners, because you're all foreigners. What word can I give to these foreigners? That they'll walk out and say, you know what? Something's happening. And this is what I had. Genesis 18 verse 24. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? The Lord said, I'm going to destroy it. And there's a scripture that says, and the leader of that time, let's not go into who he was, but he asked this, he says, can, if I find 50 righteous there, Lord, Will you save that place? And the Lord in his wisdom says, no, you're 50. And it dwindles down. He goes 30, 40, right down to 10. He says this. And then he said, Lord, please don't be angry. Let me speak just again. Because this man was now doubting himself. He said, once more, if I can find 10 in that city, will you destroy it? How many righteous people, and I'm not talking about self-righteous, because self-righteous is when you think, you know what, I've done this, I can do this. I'm better than my neighbor. I'm not a, a sinner like this one here. 
That's self-righteous. Self-righteous is when you get dressed on a Sunday and you think, if I wear this suit, it's going to make me look very holy. That's self-righteous. Okay, I'm not talking about being self-righteous. I'm talking about being righteous. The one that makes you righteous is Jesus. He is the one that makes you holy. It's when you start to cling on him and trust in him that you become righteous. How many righteous people are there in South Africa? Can we find any here this morning? Lord, are there, are there 10 here this morning that are right with you? You see, now you're thinking, you oh, I did that bad thing yesterday. Listen, when you've called upon the name of Jesus, he says, I put you in right standing. It's those that are saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you, please. I'm battling with these things. You are righteous with the Lord. It's not the ones that get it right. That's self-righteousness. I'm talking about the ones that are saying to him, Lord, I'm battling every day with this thing. I want to tell you something. The Lord in his wisdom will leave something in your life, that one little thing that you're going to battle with. Because imagine if you could stand up here pure. Pastor Mark came to me, and it's funny that I'm speaking about him this morning, and the Lord reminded me about something. He came to me one day, he was 71, and he said, you know what? I haven't sinned for three weeks. Nothing. I said, Pastor Mark, be careful here. He said, no, I'm telling you. He says, I'm living a sin-free life. It's fantastic. I'm like, are you sure? I said, what about your thoughts? Nothing. No anger, no bitterness, nothing. And at that stage, I was busy building something, and Pastor Mark was helping me. In the morning, I got to this building, and as I walked in, I heard somebody screaming at the back of the factory. Now look what the hell's going on there. And I walked there, Pastor Mark had this guy against the wall. Freaking out, he was going to hit this guy. And as I walked in, he looked at me and said, yeah, 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 you see. <laughs> we all fall short of the glory of God. I'm talking about, is there sin that you're planning? Is there stuff that you're conniving with? You're thinking tomorrow, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to enjoy myself. And you know it's something the Lord doesn't want you to do. We can look at the obvious things. But I'm talking about the stuff that affects your heart. The stuff that pulls you away from spending time with Almighty God because you're so embarrassed because you've done that thing that you cannot go and sit in His presence because all you're doing is focusing on that thing that you've done. Can you imagine? Self-righteous. We look at Matthew 6.33. It says this. But I'm reading from the Amplified Version. We all know it's seek ye first the kingdom of God. But I want to read from the Amplified Bible. It says this. But first and most importantly, seek him. Aim and strive after him. It is all about Jesus. It's all about asking the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you so that you can become more like Jesus. Then it says this, seek after his kingdom and his righteousness. What is righteousness? It's his way of doing things. The right attitude and the right character, which is the character of God. You and I can develop that character. Some people get it easy, others battle. Depending on your past. And in actual fact, if you've had a good past, you might even battle more. Because if you've never been the sinner that I was, you will never know what it feels like to be set free of the things I was battling with. I'm going to say it again for those that didn't hear you. The sinner that I was and the things that the Lord set me free from. Today I can stand here and know what it feels like to be set free of demonic strongholds in my life. So you say, well, I've never lived that life. Perhaps you need to be set free of self-righteousness. Because that is also a spirit. It's a spirit of religion that makes you feel, you know what, I'm living a good life. And it goes back to that prophetic thing where if you're paying and you're giving, you think, well, I'm okay, I'm not under a curse anymore. Don't do that. You don't know the life that is next to you. These ladies and gentlemen that are sitting amongst you here that come from horrific, horrific stuff. 
and perhaps my life is more horrific and I'm standing up here and speaking to you, grace of God. Don't ever forget that. So it says there, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and the character of God. Then he says, and all these things will be added unto you. So many times we equate that to finance. The things that he's talking about being added on is that he will protect you, look after you, guide you, love you. All these things will be added on. He never promised that the billionaires and the millionaires will be added on. The greatest men of God that walked this planet, when they died, owned nothing. What use is it you die and you've got millions and billions in the bank? Did you really fulfill the kingdom of God? Did you really do what God wanted you to do? Think about that. You can have millions in the bank and say, yeah, I was a millionaire when I died. Or imagine standing before the Lord and saying, you know, I used to have millions, but I gave it to the kingdom of God. And I'm standing before mighty God. He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You see, we equate wealth to success. In the kingdom of God, he equates giving. And I've, you, everybody here knows me. I don't speak about giving. But he equates giving when you're done and you, you breathe your last breath. Whatever's left in your bank account means nothing. Nothing. Can't. Can't. One very wise man said to me one day, you never see a fenter trailer behind a hearse. Never. There's only one thing you can take with you to heaven. Souls. You can take your friend, your family. That's the only valuable thing you'll ever take to heaven. So the way you're living, the way you're loving is the way you bring people into the kingdom of God. That is what is important to Almighty God. Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, and I'm just reading as I was reading last night, going through the scriptures. It says, for the time will come where people will not tolerate good doctrine and accurate instruction. You see, I need to give you good doctrine and instruction here. Because one day when I stand before mighty God, he's going to say, why didn't you tell that young lady there? Why didn't you say to that person this? Why didn't you point out their sin? Oh, but Pastor Kenneth, you're judging me. No, I'm setting you free. You see, if you can't treat your husband or wife right, well, maybe on a Sunday morning it looks right here. But if you can't treat that person right, how can you say you serve Almighty God? If I can't love every single one of you here the way Jesus loved, do I really have Jesus in my heart? And some of you are very difficult to love. Should, we, should I point them out, Dot? Listen. I try and look past your personality and I look at who Jesus has called you to be. There's some people that personalities clash with me. I know it. But I try by all means to upset you. <laughs> Just to get that. That's it. And he says this, they will, uh, it says, the people will not tolerate sound doctrine. And accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. If you're not challenged from this pulpit, if you're not challenged to be a better husband, to be a better person, if you're not challenged here in this congregation to say, you know what, I, I, I want to give more. I want to bless more. I want to come here on a Saturday and love a child and I'm not doing my job. If, if you sit in here, and I'm going to pick on the, the single people that are living together that are not married. If you haven't got that desire to say, you know what, I want to get married because I want to honor God and I love this person. Then I'm not doing my job. I, I want you to walk out and say, you know what, I don't know what that guy said, but I'm going to check it. It can't be in the word. I want to challenge you to a point where you start seeking the kingdom of God for yourself. I don't want to tickle your ears. It says this. That challenges him with God's truth. But wanting to have the ears tickled with some pleasing doctrine. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after the other. Have you seen those church hoppers? They want to find a church that suits their lifestyle. To satisfy their own desires. To support the errors that they hold. 
It says, but to chase after their own lusts, they shall heap up themselves teachers that, that um, it says, that follow their own lusts. So you go and find a church where the pastor's not so, doesn't confront you. They just leave stuff. The youth will tell you, if there's an issue, I tackle it. Sometimes my wife will say, just leave it, it'll fix itself. My mom also says that to me sometimes. I, I listen to her. Okay, I honor my mother. Because sometimes I want to just say, hey, pick up the phone. I need to see you. This is the problem. And then if you see that that person's not back here, then you know I've upset them. The fact is this. I want to know that Almighty God is doing something in your life, even if it means that I must upset you. I try not to. I try not to upset. But if it has to happen, it has to happen. It says this, they will grow weary of the plain gospel. People will start to seek prophets because they're seeking a new gospel. What is the plain gospel? Do you know what the gospel is? The good news about Jesus. Those are the things we should be teaching each other. It says that they will turn their ears away from truth and wander off into myth, man-made fictions, man-made stories, and will accept the unacceptable. That means they will receive teachings that Jesus never ever spoke about. And it's always around prosperity and prophetic words saying, Thus saith the Lord, you will be blessed, my brother. Give me some prophet. It will always be around that. Because that is what determines who you are in this kingdom that we live in called earth. You see, people will look at the car you drive, the house you live in, and determine, that will say, that guy is successful. It's the biggest load of rubbish. Because Jesus says, I don't have a place to put my head down. I have no home. But yet we want to live in mansions because it makes us feel important. That mansion means nothing when you die. Nothing. Zip. Zero. And I want to ask you this question. Does anybody know the date and the time when you are going to die? I know I'm going to die one day. Whoop, whoop. I know where I'm going, Lord. Not because of what I've done. In Acts 8 verse 21, it says, let's go 8.20. It says, Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed along with you because you thought you could buy the free gift of the Holy Spirit. Somebody saw them doing miracles. He, they saw them casting out demons and praying and deaf ears open, eyes opening. And they set people free like this. He said, let me pay you for that gift. He said, let that gift perish with you. Okay, let your money die with you. Because they want you to buy the Holy Spirit. And how many people in our neighborhood is doing that? And I want to get back to this. The problems in our country, the xenophobic attacks in our country started here. Did you know that? It started three weeks ago at the spa in Tramway Street where foreigners and our locals got into an argument. Our area, we're allowing stuff to happen here. We're allowing pastors and prophets to speak over our nation that have no right to do that. The right that we have as as children of Almighty God should come from places where we love the Lord Jesus and put him first. We should be the ones speaking over our neighborhood and over our nation. And I want to get back to what I said in the beginning. What are you speaking over our nation? Are you receiving these prophetic words or pathetic words? Are you receiving that? Or are we saying, you know what, Lord, in our neighborhood, we've got these problems. But we choose to speak peace over our neighborhood. That's a prophetic word. So I want to ask you this morning. We're going to, in the next two minutes, we're going to stand up. And we're going to prophesy. Because what does the Bible say about prophetic words? Who can prophesy? The Bible says everybody. You can choose to do a prophetic word over our nation. You can choose to say, Father, we speak life over our neighborhood. We choose to speak life over the people that have come from other countries, war-torn countries that are sitting in our congregation here. They are terrified even to walk out here today because they don't know who's waiting. 
you, as a local, can choose to speak life over our nation. We choose to speak a prophetic word to say, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Because that never comes into it. We never want the Lord to forgive us of our sins because we, even, we don't even know what our neighbor has done. But perhaps this morning the Lord's going to give somebody here a prophetic word for you. And if it's about your sin, praise God. And if the Lord's showing you something about me and you've got to come and tell me something, praise God. Let's stand for a moment. In, in Acts 8 verse 25, it said this, But Simon answered, I pray that the Lord from both of you, so that nothing you want and have said will ever come upon me. In other words, the death that he spoke upon him, he said, may you die with your money. He said, please pray that the Lord won't do that. So the choices that we as Christian people make and speak will happen. So if we speak negative stuff over our land, it will happen. And I have to confess, sometimes I've done that. So I want you to go into a time of prayer. But I want you to think of your neighborhood. I want you to think of your friends. There's people in this congregation that are not from our nation. I want you to think of them and start to speak a prayer out and say, Lord, bless my fellow brother that's standing here. The people that are from Zimbabwe, please, Lord, protect them. There's people from Zimbabwe that have been in this church 21, 22 years. They are brothers and sisters, and there's people out there that want to kill them. Lord, protect them. Lord, we pray for those that are getting caught up in the midst of this violence. Father, we pray, protect them. I want you to start praying that. Can you start praying? Just do a prayer. Even if it's quietly under your breath, just start to pray. Father, we just ask for protection over our schools in the area. There's 66 schools with hundreds of thousands of children in our area. Father, that they not get caught up in this thing. Assist your children prophesy that over the south of Johannesburg there will be freedom, there will be peace. Father, we pray and prophesy over the criminals in our area that they will be brought to book, Father God. Start to ask him, come guys, speak out a word. Speak out a word. And if you've got a prophetic word for someone, walk up to that person and say, thus says the Lord, I feel it in my heart. This is what Almighty God is saying over you. We speak life here, Lord. We choose life. Maybe there's some of you this morning that have to ask the Lord for forgiveness because you've treated a foreigner badly. You've spoken evil over that foreigner, which I've done sometimes. Father, forgive me for the evil words I've spoken out. Out of anger, out of the crime I've seen, I've spoken over certain nations in this place, in this country, Lord. Forgive my evil words, Lord. We speak peace over our land. We choose peace this morning, Lord. We bless this nation. Father, we remove the spirit of fear of those this morning, Lord, that feel like foreigners in our land. Lord, there's even politicians that have spoken evil of different colors in our nation. Father, forgive them, Lord. We choose this morning to choose life over ourselves and our nation. We speak peace this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.